good afternoon all uh, from who are joining from sri lanka to the uh, slva webinar series and also good morning and good afternoon for those who are joining from different uh, time zones uh, so today uh, our topic is milking on kiwis green pasture uh, the our uh, speaker is dr iroshana kulatunga uh, who is conducting this uh, webinar from uh, new zealand uh, first of all i would like to uh, call our uh, uh, president uh, doc, uh, dr erandika gunavardhana to uh, deliver the welcome speech over to you dr erandika yeah thank you very much uh, dr chamari so again uh, all of you you all are welcome for the uh, webinar conducted by sri lanka veterinary association i think this is one of the important webinars that we are conducting so uh, first of all i would like to welcome all my teachers and senior colleagues and other veterinarians and especially the veterinarians and other stakeholders who are joining with us here today from overseas from different time zones as dr chamari said so uh, i have a few messages for my slv members in sri lanka and overseas so we are just open up uh, we have open up the, the abstracts uh, uh, for the scientific annual session uh, session uh, which we are going to conduct uh, this time as a hybrid uh, webinar so uh, you can send your abstracts to the our website and meantime you can contact our co chairperson dr uh, dilan and professor neel and uh, meantime uh, we are almost compiling our second uh, volume of the your veterinarian magazine so you can send your valuable and important and interesting articles for for the public for that magazine we are going to uh, launch it uh, we have launched it already and we are going to uh, publish uh, print the uh, second volume in the near future probably on the next month so that's also open for you all and meantime you can update your membership uh, through our portal paying platform and uh, it will uh, give us more opportunities to serve you all better so with those messages uh, i would like to uh, welcome you all on this uh, friday for this important webinar we are going to have uh, dr roshan kulatunga today he has uh, the dairy experience in our overseas uh, how the new zealand uh, they are co conducting these uh, dairy sector operations we can compare with our operation and we can get ourselves improved uh, uh, after getting those uh, information from him so uh, so I'll invite you all to get uh, more take-home messages today, and it will be a very important one. So once again, while welcome you all, all I'll uh, hand over the forum to Dr. Chamari, uh, our moderator today, to conduct the sessions. Thank you very much, Dr. Chamari. Uh, thank you, Dr. Randika, uh, President, uh, Sri Lanka Veterinary Association. Uh, now I would like to uh, call, uh, invite uh, our uh, secretary, Dr. Sugat Premachandra, to introduce our speaker. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chamari. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to doctors who are participating from, uh, from the different part of the world. It's a pleasure to introduce our resource person today, Dr. Iroshana Kulatunga. Uh, he is one of the well famous veterinarian in sri lanka he graduated from university of peradeniya sri lanka in 2013 and uh, he worked as as a veterinary surgeon in nldb 2014 to 2015 uh, as a farm as a farm manager in fontera 2015 to 2018 and he moved to new zealand in 2018 currently work as a farm manager in Blendu Dairy Private Limited, Private Limited, Southland, New Zealand. Uh, on behalf of Sri Lanka Veterinary Association, I would like to invite our resource person today, Dr. Iroshana Kulatunga, to continue the webinar. Thank you. Uh, yes. Before, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you, before starting the webinar, I would like to uh, mention our, all the participants to keep their mics off. And uh, after Dr. Kulathunga's uh, presentation, we will have a Q&A session and uh, you can ask questions directly or either you can send your questions via chat box. Over to you, Dr. Kiroshana uh, Kulathunga. Thank you very much.
good morning good afternoon good evening uh, everyone uh, as i'm introduced i'm iroshna kulatunga currently i'm working as a farm manager so today my topic is dairy farming on new zealand uh, green pasture so this is the content of my presentation today i'm going to talk about the cattle population and the production overview of the country and the, what are the farming system in new zealand and the seasonal calving pattern and a uh, little bit of animal identification and transition cow management uh, those are the content that i'm going to cover uh, we'll see how it goes and a little introduction about the new zealand dairy farming uh, this is according to the 2019 2020 milking season so uh, new zealand produce 3% uh, of all the milk in the world so uh, in last uh, last season they produce uh, 1.9 billion milk solids so uh, dairy cattle population nearly 5 million and the number of herds it's about the 11,1179 farms so the average herd size is 440 cows per one uh, one farm so average uh, uh, stocking rates that means the number of cow per hectare 2.88 and the, uh, which means the for each hectare the area uh, the average 2.8 cows so herd testing 3.6 million, which means herd testing means uh, they, they uh, uh, monitor and they analyze the production and some other parameters uh, uh, using some, some technologies, using some uh, milk samples. So out of uh, 5 million, uh, 3.6 million of cows been uh, doing the herd testing and the artificial breeding out of that, the 5 million, 3.4 million cows built towards breed breed um, uh, artificial breeding and uh, in terms of the uh, uh, cattle population uh, just just precision uh, cross animals nearly 50 percent of the total herd the uh, precision cows it's about 32 percent uh, and some other uh, other herds also some other breeds also so milk price uh, these farmers are being paid not according to the milk liters so uh, according to the milk uh, uh, milk uh, kilogram that's mean this uh, uh, kilogram so average uh, milk solid price uh, last last uh, last year it was 7.2 uh, dollars that which means uh, uh, very closer to 800 uh, 80 rupees per liter so uh, average milk solid per cow this is the uh, national average 385 which means the milk solid per cow so average days in milk uh, to uh, 240 to 270 which means these farmers uh, it's very hard to achieve 300 days uh, lactation length it because of the their easy management and the climatic condition of the uh, country so i i will a little bit explain uh, in my next uh, few few slides why the base in milk is this much the uh, is uh, not closer to 300 uh it's a uh, rainfall detail when compared to sri lanka yeah you can see in sri lanka most of area below 500 millimeters but in new zealand uh, 500 millimeter less area is very uh, uh, very very limited but most of areas green color and uh, uh, light light green color which means over 1000 uh, mil millimeters so their uh, uh, rainfall pattern rainfall pattern is very very helpful for the dairy farming in uh, uh, in compared to sri lanka uh, cattle population uh, new zealand has two, uh, two two islands so north thailand and south thailand uh, north thailand has uh, nearly 58 uh, 58 uh, cows and the uh, south islands nearly uh, 41 percent so i'm working somewhere here in the south 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 island uh, south land district so basically I, i'm working uh, only uh, i have work in otago region somewhere here and i have been working for last two years in southland region but most of my daily farming experience based on southland so milk solid uh, production per cow and the uh, per he effective hectare also. So 1982, uh, the milk solid uh, per cow, it was, it's about the 260 milk solid per cow. So uh, in 20 years time, uh, they could improve up to the uh, 380, uh, 380, which means that it takes uh, 20 years to increase the milk production. That's the uh, the average milk production per cow. So 
it's 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 taking time to improve the productivity of the cows uh, and the productivity of the uh, uh, effective hectare also uh, in 19 it was it, it's about 250 uh, 220 uh, milk solid per hectare but nowadays it's almost 1100 uh, milk solid so but it takes a long time to uh, improve and this is a normal distribution of the milk uh, milk solid production per cow so uh, this is uh, national average it's somewhere here 360 or 380 but in my farm my farms are pro, uh, cows are producing uh, it's a nearly 560 milk solids which means somewhere here and ne next season we are aiming to uh, go closer to 600 milk solid per cow so basically i'm working in a, uh, a mo modern dairy farm in the system four but this is the national average so the milk solid price for, price for the last 20 years, according to the stats. So it's it's nearly uh, $8 to $6, some, some, somewhere between these, these two ranges. But uh, last year it was about, it's about the $7.2 uh, per uh, milk solid. So uh, milk solids compared to Sri Lanka also, it's uh, the barely uh, uh, the same price uh, in New Zealand. So, uh, New Zealand, uh, they have uh, the new, uh, uh, dairy. New Zealand has categorized the, all the farmers, uh, farm farm units into five systems. So according to the basis of the when imported feed is fed to dry or the lactation lactating cow during the season. Uh, uh, basis of the, this imported feed, they have categorized into uh, system one to system five. System one means all all grass self-contained, all stock on the dairy platform. So no feed is imported, no supplement feed. Basically system wise, one is the low input farm and low output farm, but the profitable is still profitable. And the system two, uh, feed imported either uh, supplement or grazing off. Uh, 4% to 18% of the total feed is important in system, system two farmers. So uh, in system three farmers, uh, 10 to 20% of the total feed is important to uh, extend the lactation, typically in the autumn feed. Uh, in my next few slides, I will explain why uh, these, these farmers need autumn, autumn feed to extend the uh, lactation. So the next, Farming system is uh, farming system for feed important using both like both ends of the lactation, which means early lactation as well as latter part of the lactation and the dry cow also. So they import 20 to 30 percent of total feed, uh, total feed onto the farm. So basically, my farm is imported about the uh, in between 20 to 30 percent. So my farm is being categorized as system four. Uh, system five uh, important feed uh, uh, feed use all year uh, throughout the lactation for the dry cows also they uh, they imported 25 to 40 percent of the total uh, total feed some sometimes it goes up to the 55 percent uh, you can see this this is a big silage and the and the grain the uh, silos also for the grain and some other byproducts so so uh, when when they import these stuff so the according to the import import level they've been categorized into the system uh, and uh, most of the new zealand farms farmers do the seasonal carbon but in sri lanka we see in uh, the year round carbon so here most of the time the uh, seasonal carbon happens it's because uh, the effective utilization of pasture from the available land so i will explain in later uh, why, how they are uh, utilizing the pasture in effective ways. So in the seasonal carving, target are as below. So within three, uh, within three weeks time, 60% of animals should be cowed. So this is the target. So uh, the whole herd should be cowed within 12 uh, weeks time, but it depends on how many weeks do you are doing the mating. If you are doing the 12 weeks mating, so you are carving within, happen within 12 weeks. If you are doing the 13 weeks, 13, 13 weeks or 14 weeks. So, so basically most of the farms, farmers do 10, 10 to 12 weeks period of the mating, which means the carving also uh, will happen within the 10 to, 10 to 12 weeks period. So mainly my presentation is uh, the in mainly uh, in New Zealand, carving period starts later, late, late winter and spring. 
uh, which means at, at, la at the last week of July and, uh, and it's finished around the second week, week of October. So based, uh, I'm, I'm in my presentation based on this late winter and spring uh, carving, but it's, uh, they have some other carving pattern also. It's autumn carving uh, and the split carving also. Autumn carving means uh, the most of the animals will carve on the uh, autumn period, which is maybe the February or uh, end of the March. It's depend on the how uh, when you start the milk uh, mating. So uh, if they uh, if they are doing the autumn autumn uh, carving, they should be uh, they should be able to do the winter milking also. So winter milking during the winter, the payout is a little bit higher than the other 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 months. So uh, some farmers wants to go for the uh, aut autumn autumn carving to earn some extra money. So, so the uh, there's a, another carving uh, pattern, the split carving, which means the combination of these two. The, there will be one carving in in uh, late autumn, and the, there will be another carving late winter and the spring. So why these farmers are doing the seasonal carving? So it, it because the effective pasture management and the maximum utilization of the uh, pasture they produce and the climatic condition of the country leads to poor uh, growth, uh, gra grass growth rate during the uh, cool climate. I will explain it now. So uh, New Zealand has mainly four seasons, summer, winter, uh, summer, autumn, winter, spring. Now we are at the the last stage of the winter. So we are somewhere here. So normally new, new season starts at the first of the June it, because you can see uh, from the later part of the autumn and the uh, winter also, uh, the grass, grass growth is uh, very, very poor. So, so it, it happens because of the, um, the temperature goes down. So once the temperature goes down, the air temperature and the soil temperature, the, uh, the this dry grass growth rate dramatically low. So because of this, the fast supply is very low. It because of the temperature. So they they choose to go for the seasonal carving. So you can see the the in the worst day, it's a the heavy snow day. This is a, a rye grass paddock. You can see the during a early uh, late winter uh pasture, they mainly consider about the pasture demand and pasture supply so uh, this is the uh, events with the pasture demand and pasture supply throughout the one milking season so one milking season as i explained uh, earlier it's, it starts from june and end from the june so uh, we are about somewhere uh, July, end of the July here. Now it's slowly carving is starting in my farm also. The carving starts at the last last week of July here, and it goes up to the uh, uh, first or second week of the October. Now this is the carving period we are now we are dealing with. Now once the carving happens, you can see the grass grass growth rate. Grass growth rate means grass supply. The the red color one is the feed demand, which means the animal demand. Uh, you can see at the uh, winter period, demand is always higher than the supply. So this is the deficit period. So this is very, very hard, hard time to feed these animals and keep the pasture quality and bugging. And the, uh, it's very, very uh, hard for the uh, pasture, pasture management. So that's why they, they uh, uh, drive off these animals. Once carving happens, you can see that once the uh, season goes, the pasture supply is going high. So we can meet a, a point where the uh, feed supply and the feed demand cross. That means the balanced date uh, pasture cover. Once we hit the balanced date pasture cover, there will be a pasture, uh, feed surplus. So these surplus can be used for, to make some silage or baleage to can, uh, so then the, these farmers can feed at the la later part of the autumn and the early, early, uh, winter also so 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 they know they are feed demand and the feed supply that is the most important thing every farmer knows how much uh, grass their uh, his farm is going uh, to grow in next next uh, next month or next period of time so that is most important things knowing your supply and knowing your demand is very very important and uh, once we once we move to dry uh, dry cow management, now we are uh, at the late late part of the dry dry cow uh, dry dry cow stage. So usually dry off which happen at the end of the autumn, which means the uh, 
uh, last week of the May or the uh, early first week of June. June. It because not these animals come to the 300 days, no, or otherwise the seven month pregnant. No, it because of the uh, grass growth rate. That's why they are dry, uh, days in milk is as, uh, uh, it's about 240 to 270. Last year, my farm, uh, our the whole uh, dry matter. Uh, uh, days in milk was 241 days. So even though the animals were producing well, so people, farmers has to dry off the animals it's because of the poor grass production. So once they are uh, dry, uh, dry in the dry condition, we try to keep uh, try to keep feeding them in a very good condition. So uh, here also we always think about the uh, feed demand, energy demand. So according to the energy demand, we feed the uh, dry mat amount of dry matter. So at the time of dry drying off, we, uh, some farmers use long acting uh, dry cow therapy. Uh, in my farm also, we use long acting uh, dry cow therapy, ampicillin and clopacillin. So following with the teat seal for each and every animal which contain bismuth sulfate, you can see in the picture, just after milking, uh, just, uh, just after calving, we need to strip each part uh, before we do the uh, cups on. So you can see some bismuth uh, sulfates uh, sitting on the, this platform. So uh, teeth seal is more important uh, to prevent the mastitis uh, during the dry cow condition, uh, during the dry condition. So these are the feed stuff we use in New Zealand kale for the beet is the most common thing in my area. So and the bellage also. Bellage means the uh, type of silage, which, but it's a portable one. It's a wrapping with the wrapper. So these are the, uh, the nutritive value. So the kale, even though kale or the fodder bead, these are the, uh, uh, these are the dry stuff. You can see the 11, uh, 11 to 13.5 megajoule me metabolizable energy per kilogram. So this is very, very best quality feed that we can feed. So even bellage, you can see 10. And but uh, we we feed these animals the straw also it as a filler not not to give the any um, energy just as a filler because filler because once the uh, once the calf is developing within the uh, stomach so the uh, rumen will press into the some uh, the other area so the the rumen always get compressed. So we need to keep that rumen as much as a fill. So we use, uh, we give a lot of uh, uh, straws as a filler so they can eat. And that other thing is during the uh, uh, cold climate, when they chew the uh, straws, it's, it's create some uh, inner, uh, heat for them. So it, it make them warm also. Uh, and we, we feed some mineral uh, during the, uh, dry cow state. These are some feed stuff that we use. Uh, in my farm, we, we use the kale. This is kale. You can see 11.0 to 13.5 megajoule. The fodder is 12 to 13.5 megajoule per kilogram per dry matter. So bale age and the straw. The straw also has some 6.5 megajoule. So, uh, but we, we need the, uh, this straw as a filler, human filler. So, we are mainly concerned about the uh, body condition score, uh, score uh, throughout the lactation period and the, even the dry period also we have we have been monitoring those animals body condition score and and uh, keep the record record for the how their body condition is gaining or uh, dropping so according to the uh, our targets targets us in the the light blue color you can see at the time of dry off this animal should be within this period uh, i think uh, 4.5 to 5 but our aim at the car at the time of carving for the cows 5 um, uh, uh, body condition is score for the heifers 5.5 so this this is our target. Once once those animal cows, as you know, because of the negative energy balance, animal lose some condition. That is why the body condition is goes down. So once body condition comes here, the uh, normally no, these animals cow about August. So they comes to the peak around here. So once the animals come to peak, their body condition is losing. So uh, we that's why we need to feed these animal during the. Uh, the dry dry period uh, to keep their body condition as much as 
uh, higher. Imagine if these animals crowd somewhere here, they will end up the body condition at the time of mating or at the time of peak, peak somewhere here. So it's not going to, uh, uh, that, that type of animal won't give much milk rather than the uh, feeding these animals, uh, rather than the, uh, carving these animals with the good body condition is for. So, so during feeding during the dry period is very, very important because of this. Uh, you can see if, if your animal cow the, at the uh, five uh, body condition is for, she slowly come up to here. But, but after the uh, carving also, you have to manage the, the, the feed level in a high, high condition, high, high level, otherwise, uh, this and this body condition dramatically can go down also. But if you manage your animals in well uh, during the uh, dry periods, so they they may uh, get their good body condition. So uh, they can give a uh, early peak. They can come to the early peak and give a lot of milk for you. So this is just one one graph. Uh, uh, the last 2019. So our at the time 19 July miss at the just before the carving, just before the carving, the herd average was 5.2. So we have been uh, monitoring their body condition and keep the recording also, as as I explained. So more uh, uh, yes, 5.2. So uh, this is a very good app we are using. This is body condition score tracker. You can go to the App Store or the Google uh, Google app. Uh, app store so just search as body condition tracker so once once you download this one you can create your own herds and uh, just when you go to your farm uh, it's it has a 2.5 3 3.5 so once once you select it will create the just date uh, just a uh, record of the your body condition so you can keep this one when uh, and with the date it will save with the date when when you go to your herd and do this one and and use this smart app as soon as possible. So I don't know whether uh, you can download this one in the uh, in in different uh, time zone or uh, time zones. Uh, but please try this one first and use as a smart veterinarian. So energy supply and energy and energy demand for dry cows. Uh, we are um, we are mainly. Thinking about and the considering the supply versus demand, even they are in the dry condition. So knowing your demand, knowing your supply, so you can you can be a good a good uh, farmer or good advisor. So if you know your animals' demand and you can uh, you can uh, calculate your supply, so you can give your supply. So maintenance energy, uh, I'm considering 550 anim, uh, kilogram live weight Frisian cow. It's a very very big animal. So the maintenance, uh, I'm, uh, we, I have this, this book for the, most of the dairy farmers has this book, this the New Zealand, uh, Dairy New Zealand Fact and Figures. Uh, you can download this, this book also. Uh, I, I have uh, given the uh, link in my uh, next few slides. So I'm, I'm using this book as my reference. Uh, so may, as maintenance energy, uh, this is the maintenance for the 550 cows, uh, kilograms of cow, no production, no production during the dry period. So no need energy for that one. But the pregnancy is tricky. You can see the when the 12 weeks prior to calving, eight weeks and two weeks prior to calving, the, she needs a lot of, a lot of uh, energy. So according to the energy level, so uh, maintenance, pregnancy and live weight chain, we do not expect any live weight chain at the last four weeks of uh, dry period it because of the climatic condition of the country or some uh, some other uh, factors also so so our aim is to get their body condition at the rice stage just before four weeks uh, of carving so that's why the uh, live weight chain we do not calculate live weight chain at last four weeks or last two weeks so uh, for to gain this one as the reference, it's always coming from this this book and walking and the how 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 many kilometers of animals are walking so according to these uh, twelve weeks and uh, this is the energy total energy total energy. Knowing your total energy and you, you can make a ration. Uh, if you know your energy demand, you can make your ration according to the available availability of your feed stuff. Kale, uh, I I have. 
uh, mention here kale, village, silage, DDG, and lead feed. Lead feed is more important for the transition cows, which is only can feed only three weeks before the calving. Uh, transition is very, very important. That's why these animals won't get any lead feed or any other ball, uh, wheat or DDG. But the, when they are the 12 weeks and eight weeks, uh, they will get the, this amount of uh, this amount of the feed stuff. You can see the total energy supply is far high. But even though we, in the book value says this amount, this feeding level can be changed in the uh, either either way due to the climatic condition. I will show you. You can see this is the uh, the place where the dry cows are being raised. So this is covered with the uh, this is kale and covered with snow. So the every day uh, their energy uh, uh, supply will be changed due to the, uh, the practical situation. So that's why the, uh, in the book value, the energy supply is a little bit high, but this could this can be uh, be low or uh, high, that could be either way. So, but anyway, we need to supply the energy uh, more than their demand. Otherwise their body, body weight not going to change. So otherwise the uh, calf will be, the birth weight will be very, very low. So to, to get the, to gain the good uh, uh, live, weight, live weight for the calf also, we need to feed uh, these dry animals in a very good condition. So uh, we, I, haven't, I haven't updated, uh, added here straw uh, as a, uh, in, in the ration, but the keeping, is throwing the all the time close to cows. If they want, they will eat as a rumen filler. So as a rumen filler, we, we have been we have been given those uh, uh, straw for the cows. So if they want, they can they can eat and just for the rumen filler. So knowing your supply, knowing your demand is very very important uh, in the dry cow management. So this is dry cow. So you can imagine these animals, how these animals are getting their. <clears throat> Uh, feed. So uh, even though book value is high, some days the, their supply will be uh, reduced. So transition cow management, uh, it is very, very important when we comes to the peak milk, uh, how, how we are reaching the peak milk and the high, high peak milk, transition cow. What type of farmers we are? Actually, we are rumen bug farmers, not dairy farmers. We are not, not feeding for the cows. We are feeding for the bugs in the, uh, in the rumen. We must understand exactly what rumen bug needs, when they need, and why they need it. If you know the, the requirement of your bugs, you can be a good farmer. So three, three weeks before the calving and the three weeks after the calving we call as transition period where rumen environment change from dry period to lactation period so a lot of uh, hormones are going to be changed within the cow's uh, body we are, during these six weeks time so we need to care these animals as uh, uh, good as possible so this is a belly just after calving we uh, does some uh, lime powder it's contain the calcium carbonate and the magnesium just to give a lot of uh, calcium boost. So this is the, the this, this is why the animals need some transition. They are being on the fodder beet or kale and with the uh, straw and uh, baleage. Once they cow, they slowly come to the milking. So this period is very very important to get the rumen environment in the right position. So uh, to, to do that one, for we you use some pellets that we call lead feed, and you can see this one. So why we are using this one for the last three weeks? This is just only for the three weeks. You can't feed this feed more than three weeks. So uh, why we are using this one? Conditioning the room and bugs and uh, some extra energy and protein through the better feed conversion. So reaching early peak milk yield and achieving the higher peak yield the early and the higher. So if you can take your animal in the early peak, they are the uh, total lactation yield will be uh, very, very higher than the, the animal who came to the peak yield later. Uh, and uh, preventing the metabolic diseases in the milk fever, ketosis and stagus. Imagine if the 1500 cow unit and if the 4% or 5% of the animal get the milk fever within 12 weeks time, what will be the, the 
the workload for the workers and the what uh, how many animals got the milk fever and the metabolic condition so it's very very important to prevent the metabolic diseases at the time of uh, carving and the easy administering vitamins and the minerals uh, once we use this one we can uh, we can easily try uh, tr uh, uh, transition these animals so this is the feed that we are i'm talking about so uh, you can see the uh, food protein level is 18 percent and the uh, estimated energy is 11.5 uh, only two kilograms of the uh, 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 in only two kilograms we can feed these animals only 14 to 21 days not more than that and you can see the decayed decayed level that is the uh, dietary cation anion difference. I will explain it later. This is very important at the time of transition. So what is decade means? Decades means dietary cation anion difference, which means it's very important to prevent the milk fever. So what are the positively charged cations? That is sodium and uh, potassium. What are the uh, negatively charged? That is sulfur and chlorine. Our aim is to decrease the uh, decrease the cation, increase the anion. Why? To make the metabolic acidosis, mild metabolic metabolic acidosis within the blood, not within the rumen. So one, once uh, once we make that metabolic acidosis, blood has narrow pH tolerance. So uh, when the acidity range acidity change in the blood, cow needs to input uh, to change to respond quickly to buffer the blood. Only way to do this change the calcium concentration in the blood, which means releasing the calcium from the cow reservoirs from the bone marrow into the uh, into the uh, blood system, which will help to prevent the uh, metabolic condition. So, uh, the, uh, what are the desire, desire, desirable uh, ionic salts, which is only two to three weeks prior to carving, not more than that. That's magnesium sulfate or magnesium chloride. So once you introduce these sulfate or chloride, the urine pH also will be acidic. Yeah, you can use a dipstick, the urine dipstick to check the uh, acidity level of the urine. So it's very important to maintain decade to prevent the uh, milk fever condition this is the and the same time in the increase uh, the ionic salts once the an uh, ionic salts increase the decrease the blood ph so increase the parathyroid hormone so increase uh, calcium absorption from the intestine which reduce the hypocalcemia the main 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 aim is to uh, prevent the metabolic diseases not to treat that's the main thing so this is very interesting part for me, feeding management and tools. So uh, we, are, we are talking of mainly considering the energy demand versus energy supply. So, and the partial demand and the partial supply. The most of farmers know their demand of the pasture and the supply of the pasture. That supply means growth rate. Basically, these animals uh, uh, been fed with the rye grass. That's a perennial rye grass plus clover. But with, there are some mixed soils also clover, chicory, and plantain. So these are some sowing so rates. And you can see these animals are on on grass. So these uh, these are rye grass just before the uh, this uh, the free grazing free grazing just just before the grazing. So these are the uh, another type of the feed stuff we have: the white clover and red clover, plantain and chicory. And we use some crops during the uh, summer period when the drought comes, the pasture supplies go. So we cultivate some uh, some crops like turnips. So you can see the turnips has 12, 12 megajoule metabolizable energy. So which is uh, very very high nutritive value uh, feed stuff to feed during the summer. So uh, rye grass versus napier and in the energy content of the of the rye grass uh, during uh, during the season. So spring, summer, uh, dry summer, and the autumn, you can see it's it's uh, not much change. Eleven point five, twelve twelve megajoule. But when you come to the CO three. It, it's about even though you cut at the four weeks stage, it's 8.3 megajoule. So 
at the same time you can you can compare the digestibility digestibility of this rye grass is 70 to 85 percent so and but when it comes to the uh, digestibility of then so your yeah, energy level is very low the digestibility is very low the the feed stuff we have in sri lanka but the feed stuff we have in new zealand is very very uh, a high high in energy and protein protein so at the same time we consider about the ndf level which because this this uh, is the limiting factor for the dry matter intake ndf neutral detergent fiber so that is the in the early spring we can achieve the 35 percent so the animal can one, one dairy animal can eat only 1.2 percent of the uh, body weight of the uh, NDF level. So that is the maximum amount that animal can eat. So the farmers are uh, concerned about the quality of the grass they produce. So they want to keep their NDF level very, very low and uh, as much as possible and high metabolic uh, energy level and the high protein also. So, and no, and the uh, other thing is they know they are the growth rate during, during the season. So during uh, knowing their growth rate, which means faster supply, easily they can manage their stock. Uh, they can reduce, even though they can reduce their uh, numbers if the grass growth rate is going down and these numbers can be changed from, uh, uh, farm to farm or area to area or island to island. So uh, this is a just a idea, but the, you can understand during the spring, the, the dry, uh, growth rate is very high or autumn and winter. Now we are at winter, so the grass growth rate is very, very low. So this rye grass composition in terms of the energy level is very, very high. So feeding management, so need to assess the faster growth rate once a week or twice a week, at least once a week or twice a week. So once, once you assess the growth rate, you can make a feed wedge uh, uh, where you are the short from the you are short, short grass from the lawn grass. I will, I will show in the next slide. And the how, what are the methods to measure the growth rate? The racing plate meter or SIDEX? or satellite, some, some farmers use satellite fast analyze also. So some farmers use modern technology uh, to take the, the faster growth rate. This is the rising plate meter and the just, just, a, just a thing. And, and this is the feed which I'm talking about. Once, once you, this each filler, each column is a far, uh, uh, one paddock. So these are just, just be, Dakti Roshan. Dakti Roshan. Dr. 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 I think we lost. You... Yeah, I think we lost the connection of Dr. Roshan. Wait, I'll try to join him again. Okay. Right?
Hello, I think Dr. Eroshana is having an internet connection problem. Uh, please bear with us. He will join the uh, webinar soon. Dr. Sagar, hello, Sagar. Dala. New Zealand Kauru response karan na mulu earthquake kya kya ila dhan na. Saagada ma mukut na. Saagada na. Yeah, isse le hitiya na yam sir. Yeah, he's he's online but he's not speaking. Ah. Yeah, dia loge. एकला मनहरी में पावा पावा काट चेना कुवा में सर माहिता ने हाँ प्रॉब्लम यस में बट ही इस इन सेपरेट टाइलैंड साउथ टाइलैंड आ रहा है एंड ही इस इन द नदर नॉर्थ टाइलैंड Doctor Anil? Yes, Doctor Anil. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, yeah, me, while joining, uh, as you are a dairy expert, actually, uh, do, you, do you have any ideas sir, about that, uh, the bucks story that uh, he mentioned about this, you know, the rumen bucks, the, are uh -huh. they micro? Is it, oh, yeah, yeah, that are... is usually, that is normally, everybody is telling like that because we feed the rumen uh, microbial. So basically microbes are the one which produce the protein eventually, isn't it? Microbial protein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So that will go into the abomasum and, and the intestine digest and absorb the, the nutrients. So that is why they see, I mean, we feed the bugs and then the bugs are the one really contribute to the ruminant nutrition. Mm -hmm. That is why feed the bugs, feed the ruminant or something. It is a very common sort of thing used in uh, dairy uh, cattle. Uh, okay. These yeah. are basically microbes, uh, bacteria, protozoa, and mm -hmm. those things.
Doctor Chamari. Yes, Doctor Andika. Yeah, yeah, I asked Doctor Disnak to contact him now. You know, over the phone uh, to uh -huh. verify whether there's any problem. Like he he's calling now to Doctor Hiroshi. Ah, yeah. Okay. Dr. Roshana? Dr. Roshana? Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Thank you very much. You are rejoined, right? Yeah. <laughs> what happened? I did not notice that one. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. So you can uh, continue, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dr. Roshana, yes, you can continue now. Yeah. Uh, in which slide I stop? Which slide? I was missed from which side? No, yeah, no, the, after this one, you explain more. There are a few more slides forward. No. No, before that, yeah. Here? Yes. What about here? Ah, yes, yes, this is the one, yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, sorry for that. And I was talking about the available feed, which means some some amount of feed we have to left in the paddock. So which we call as residual residual amount. So uh, we need to maintain residual level in a certain certain level. So so next growth will uh, happens. Uh, according to the residual level. So my farmers are more concerning about the residual levels of horse grazing cover. So uh, in Sri Lanka also, we are con uh, concerning about the CO3 cutting uh, height or the uh, how much, uh, how, how much uh, you can leave in the grass, uh, in the paddock. So this is basically same. And uh, grass growth rate, as you can see here, grass growth rate is equal to pasture supply. So it's 40 uh, kilograms dry matter hectare per day. So now I'm going to uh, calculate the feed demand. How I'm going to calculate feed demand? Feed demand equal dry matter intake multiplied by the herd size divided by effective hectare. So I, I'm imagining I'm uh, feeding 14 kilograms dry matter and for 1400 cows and the effective hectares is 534. So my, my feed demand is 36. So now in your feed demand and the now in your feed supply. So now supply is greater than the demand. So there won't be any issue and there will be a little bit surplus, but this surplus won't be much. So now in your demand and supply. So imagine your demand is higher than the supply. So what we can do, what you can do is put in some uh, supplement like, such as the uh, PK or farm kernel or uh, silage or some other, other products, DDG or wheat or some, something like that. So knowing your feed demand and feed, feed supply. So it is very important. And uh, in research, and here I mentioned, do we know the growth rate of our fodder for, for, uh, for last week or next week? 
So we need to we need to uh, develop a method to measure the growth rate day by day or even weekly or even monthly and the yield of the fodder also without cutting. So so if we can if we if we know our growth rate and our yield also, so we can make our uh, plan for the our the next few months. So if you know your supply and if you know your demand, so. It's it's very easy to manage your surplus or uh, deficit. The main thing is knowing your supply and the demand. And uh, at the uh, early, this is the place we call the balance based pasture cover, where the uh, feed demand uh, hit the feed supply. So upon this point, there will be a uh, feed surplus. So because of this surplus, we can make either silage or baleage. So uh, once once you make silage and baleage, you can feed these animals uh, at the latter part of the autumn. So March, April, and May. You can see at the time of March, or it it may be the from the February. So February here is the uh, drought, uh, the very very drought. It is that that balance point that come to maybe come to this area also. So if it comes here, if you if you may have produced a lot of su uh, supplements, and you can feed these supplements that you you make through the feed surplus to ex extend your milk lactation. So knowing your uh, knowing your demand and the supply is the most important thing. So if you have a lot of amount of grass, so you can make silage. So a uh, lot of silage. Uh, if you don't, if you have small amount of grass, you can make baleage. So which means uh, these these baleages, the you can easily transport from one one point to another point, even one farm to another farm. So it's very very important. Uh, it's very easy rather than the silage also. If you have a lot of amount of sil uh, feed go for the silage and if you have a few paddocks it may be seven hectares or 20 hectares you can make uh, baleages so uh, some feed values uh, here i'm talking about the pasture and the excellent pasture ndf level may be 37 percent 37 percent at the average 40 percent farmers are most concerned about the quality of the grass so they do a lot of toppings after after uh, grazing also, which means they cut the uh, leftover things to uh, just before the next growth. So that that might uh, reduce the grass growth rate, but it will, it will increase the the quality of the grass. So you can see the uh, energy energy value of this pasture. It's 12.5, 12, or even at the poor stage, poor stage of rye, it's nine percent, uh, nine metabolizable energy. But when you talk about uh, the uh, CO3 or CO4, it's it's about 8.5 or below the 8. So the, even the poor poor grass, the it's NDF level is 50. And you can see here the cost cost is very very cheap in, in terms of the uh, amount that they spend. So they can uh, produce cheap grass here because of uh, the climatic condition and the land availability. And the same time. And we use some crops here, the summer turnips and for summer turnips or fodder wheat. Some farmers use fodder wheat at the at the late like late uh, autumn. So uh, they are the energy value is 12 and 14. So uh, so the energy value is very, very high in the pasture and some other crop. Even the uh, grain, we use wheat, maize, and barley in our uh, in some, some farms. And you can see in V 12.7. And the most important thing is NDF level is 12. So if you feed maize, uh, if you have maize, its NDF level is very, very low. And the energy level is very, very high. So you can uh, substitute uh, a lot of sub, uh, pasture by adding some maize without um, making any trouble to your NDF uh, intake. So maximum animal can, one dairy animal can eat 1.2% of the uh, body weight of NDF level. So if when once you make your ration, calculate the in NDF level, the how much the total value of the NDF. So so then you can uh, imagine that that amount that you feed in front of animal that even that animal can eat or not. 
So some other dry product, products we use BDG, this is a, this is distillers grain grain. That's a byproduct of ethanol making with the maize maize seeds. Uh, it's even though it's a uh, NDF level is high, uh, 40, the energy level is very very high. So some farm kernel and the silage and these are the uh, some uh, valuable feed uh, stuff we have here. So. Yes. The feed analysis report, the uh, near infrared spectrometry. So you can see that this, I have compared with the pasture, uh, pasture sample versus the uh, silage sample that make in, uh, that is 2021, the February. So metabolism by energy is 11.6 in pasture and the silage also 11.3, but the uh, range says 8.5 to 10. This particular sample is from the silage is very, very high. Very uh, in nutritive value is very, very high. You look at the uh, digestibility of the uh, organic matter, it's 70.5 and here 71%. So it's very, very nutritive feed and very digestible. At the same time, uh, crude protein level uh, in the past silage is 17.5. And when it's come to fresh, 24.7. So knowing you are the values of you, what you are feeding, you can easily make your uh, ration and adding the, uh, you can drop down or you can increase some other feed materials. So I'm going to do some uh, calculation here based on the body weight, 550 kilograms of animal, uh, Frisian animals, 90% of the herds can take, if I'm imagining as 90% of the animals, Frisian animals, the, this energy value I got from this, my reference book, and but e easily you can find your, uh, energy level for one milk solid. I will explain it later in my next few slides. So uh, I have calculated here 1400 cows at the calving peak milk and late. You can see at the time of calving, those animals produce 1600, 16 um, liter per cow per day, and which means equal 1.3 uh, milk solids here. At the peak 2.3, mid two and late lactation. They are the late lactation at the two, 220 or 230 days in milk. Uh, they were producing, or sometimes uh, 240, they were producing 20 liters, the high, higher producers. And you can see the peak milk to the mil mid milk the drop is very, very low, which means if you feed your animal very well, that the natural drop of the milk in the uh, lactation curve, but you can hold their production uh, from the period of time. If you care, you are, if you feed your an, uh, animals well, they will hold the production. They will give the good return for your hard work. So uh, as I explained this one, this is the uh, produ production increase, then the body weight goes down and we are monitoring the body condition score and the negative energy balance and everything as you all know. And the, uh, uh, here milk production. So if you know the fat percentage of your uh, milk and the protein percentage of your milk, the seasonal milk, so you can uh, you, uh, from fast to, fat percentage to protein percentage, you can easily find out the, uh, the energy level for the uh, production of one liter of milk. Imagine the uh, 4.6 and 3.8 uh, protein and fat. This animal needs 5.6 megajoule uh, metabolizable energy to produce the one liter of milk. Now I know the, the amount of energy uh, what my animals needs to make one liter of milk. Uh, so easily I can uh, calculate the energy for the production. And this is just a summary of the, the somatic cell count, the 120,000 uh, uh, 120, for the whole season. So which means the in New Zealand below the one, 150 is the, the, the they will give, get the uh, certificate as the good, 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 good quality milk. If they are, if this come goes to 400, 400,000, no one going to accept your milk. So the cutoff point is 400,000. This is 120, but the if you can maintain below 150,000, so that's best milk. Uh, now I'm going to calculate some de demand. So energy demand versus supply, same, same principle. First, you need to know that you are demand, then you can make your supply. So maximum 1.2% of the body weight, so 550 kilograms. So, uh, 
all the references coming from this book and the maintenance energy production now according to the the liters now now you know the amount of the energy you need for the, uh, making one liter of milk so multiply by this one here it comes here and the important part is the first car uh, the carbon and the peak yield no no need any energy for the pregnancy once they they become pregnant only they need some energy to develop the embryo so uh, at the early stage they don't need any 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 energy to the pregnancy but at the at the time of carving and peak you you see, saw the uh, negative energy balance and drop in the body condition which means live weight change live weight is losing once live weight is losing animal is uh, giving some energy to and uh, the out that's that's utilizing their body weight body tissues that's why it's minus so that's one, once we calculate here and and walking also we need to consider how how many kilo, kilometers uh, per day those animals are walking imagine if they are walking uh, 10 10 10 kilo, kilometer which because uh, most of the time they uh, we do the twice a day milking or uh, some other farmers do twice a day once a day or 16 hours which means the three milking in 48 hours that's mean they are they skipping one milking to cut down sometimes the the walking distance or uh, 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 drop down the production and they increase the um, uh, live weight change and body condition everything so if you know your demand you can easily calculate your uh, supply so here you can see the dry matter intake it's same it's uh, the marginally same 20 21 22 21 so during the whole lactation i'm not dropping my dry matter intake the animal is because during the whole season this animal can eat this much amount of uh, feed the problem is your grass supply goes down why your grass supply is goes down? If your grass supply is goes down, you, you if you can put a lot of the supplements in front of these animals, this animal is still is able to eat. So they will eat that their potential. So we don't we are not dropping the dry matter intake according to the pasture supply. So if the pasture supply goes down, we put a lot of supplements in front of them as feed demand keeps same. So even though fast, uh, supply goes down, we uh, feed these animals to balance, uh, feed these supplements to balance the, uh, the total energy requirement. You can see the total energy requirement here and the, your sup supply energy. So marginally same. So this one also can be changed even though book value says, says. but most, most of the things now here, you can see the body condition is gaining and the production also holding so which means you are you are feeding your animal in a very very good condition so if you can feed animal uh, in very good condition they will produce uh, the lot of milk but it it costs uh, it, you have to do a lot of things but they uh, if you can maintain their energy uh, calculate their demand and supply every week or every month uh, even uh, even every month that would be enough so uh, i'm going to talk about um, i'll uh, do a little bit quicker so uh, uh, this is just just summary of the milking how we do we have 1400 cows so the, uh, 530 hectares so here i'm talking about just little about my farm so 80 bale rotary y cut or rotary it's spinning the uh, anti clockwise uh, some some rotary is spinning clockwise or either anti clockwise also so auto cup soaps and the shed feeding and drafting gates and the few things so this is the uh, shed i'm talking about this is circular yards animal comes from here and goes there this is the grain silage uh, grain silos which contain the uh, ddg and the wheat so and this is a mineral all these minerals we uh, some farmers mix the minerals into the water but we do not uh, we add into the um, uh, feeding system according to their production. So uh, some urea uh, storage, and this is just a picture. And uh, once these animals come, uh, uh, according to their uh, number, the computer will recognize their number. So the grain, DDG, and molasses, we be feeding molasses also throughout the lactation and the mineral. You can see this is our computer program that we run once the animals comes here the uh, that eid will recognize the animal according to the animal number and production 
the the feed will be the amount of the feed will release so last year we got the 120 uh, somatic cell count the certificates it's 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 very amazing and we do a lot of stripping just before the cups uh, cups on just just before the mil milking every every quarter two times per week so every monday morning and evening front and back so like likewise we we do the stripping just before the uh, cups on uh, this uh, uh, i will show one video later how how the teeth spare works automatically but uh, it's a very, very effective method. So breeding, it's very interesting. Uh, uh, here with some benchmarking, uh, this is the top top figure farm in the breeding. We need to submit all the animals uh, within three weeks times 90%, but we have some farmers 87% and some farmers 80% also. Submission rate means the number of animal you bred out of the total number of the uh, breedable cows within the three weeks time from your farm 90 percent of animals should be bred so that is the main goal so in six weeks in calf rate the, that's we have been monitoring uh, it should come so this is the top farm figure 78 if you can reach to 70 that's the top farm figures and the empty rates then uh, 18 percent or 16 percent or this is the the top farm figures also uh, because the most of the farmers do not keep the empty cows which means non-pregnant animal for the next season but some farmers keep as carryovers for the next next season uh, but most of the farmers won't keep this just just call those animals so if if your uh, empty rate is very very low you can call a lot of um, uh, low producers or the lame cows or some recurrent mastitis animal also so empty rate is very very important when you make uh, when you uh, consider the, the breeding so conception rate we need to go for 60 we are somewhere here so what we do in the mating, three weeks before the mating, we do the heat 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 check for the whole whole herd. So we do the here. I will explain uh, easily. The, we do the uh, tail pain here and put some patches here. This is heat patch. So once you put the heat patch here, you can see some rub marks. Once the animals been uh, mounted here, the, this rub marks will happen and. Uh, these paints will go off and this activate this heat patch. Once this act activate this heat patch, this camera will pick up. Or if you do not have the most of the farmers don't have this one, but if you don't have this one, someone manually draw how to draft these animals. So, so what we do here before before three weeks of start of mate, mating, we we run these cycles and we we identify which animals are non cyclers once we once we identify all the non cyclers so we do the we go for the sida program for the 2 to 5 years old animals if those animals within the 2 to 5 years only we do the sida and here we do the four four weeks ai and the four weeks bull very very simple four weeks ai four four weeks bull service 10 days short gestation cycle semen just to narrow down the calving period uh, so that's all uh, we are not trying in more than uh, 12 weeks. So what if they uh, get pregnant, the vets will come here and do the pregnancy diagnosis for three times or so some farmers two, two times. On uh, If they are pregnant, they can be at the, uh, they can go for the dry off. So otherwise they will end up with the culling. So some farms uh, we use sex semen and the conventional semen also for the heifers, we use uh, sex semen and use sida for the heifers also to make them all them uh, uh, breed at once it's for them very uh, easy management so once these animals come to the platform that the eid will recognize the number and it, it's automatically connect here so you can see the green color one is the missing heat patch this missing heat patch animal would be the heat heat animal so these animals automatically will be drafted in the separate pen it's very very easy to uh, do it's so no need labor here just just fancy camera and uh, this is just a summary of the uh, summary of a day this particular day we uh, those cam that camera have been drafted 53 animals for the as activated heat patches or the missing heat patches once we see these animals manually we see these animals whether they are to actual 
heat or not they uh, we put the uh, we do the ai artificial breeding or not so we do some sida program also here uh, for the uh, non cyclers the first day uh, day 1 sida with some gnrh and day 7 remove the uh, remove the sida with you to to mlpg or ecg plus or minus for day 8 if these animals come to heat they do the mating the the animal who come to the heat but if not uh, they uh, in my farm we practice to uh, again we do two ml of pg at the evening so and the day nine again that day nine morning if the few animals come to the heat we can do the, these animals ai but even though not and the again even in the nine uh, gnr this is a different uh cedar program in so one farm to one farm they are uh, changing according to the farm owner's expectation or the the price level and everything they you know it's very um, easy to chain customize according to the your requirement so culling is uh, the the most important thing in new zealand dairy farming most of the time the first time the first reason is the reproductive disorders so most of the time all the empty cows goes to them uh, uh, for the works which means the processing plant they've been culled so some farmers only keep as carrier overs for the next next milking cycles or if they are re recurrent mastitis case or severe lameness or low producers this is very very important most of the time we can uh, uh, we ha they have 20 to 25 percent of the herd uh, replacement herd if you want to increase your uh, milk production you need to call your low producers how do you uh, call your low producers if you are in empty rate or the death rate is high if you want to call your low producers you need to keep your empty rate as much as low and they keep the death rate low because the 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 total amount we can't change so uh, if farmer has a good um, uh, empty rate that means below eight percent or nine percent or they trade less than two percent so that would be helped to improve the, their productivity so animal health also the most of the time the animal health problem appears is seasonal time but the, sometimes the um, uh, mastitis or lameness or some other diseases or conditions uh, we can see throughout the season but the main thing is not to treat these animals just to prevent these so I'm not much uh, thinking about the how to treat these animals, not I'm thinking about how to prevent these animal health conditions. So bacterial diseases, leptospirosis or some other diseases. So a uh, major issue is the farm uh, in the, the milk fever, grass staggers, mastitis, lameness and bloat and acidosis. These are the major things. So we are trying to minimize these conditions, just not to just treat. Uh, some vaccine we use salmonella vaccine or rotaviral vaccine just before three weeks to 12 weeks before calving to uh, develop a lot of antibodies within the mother and to transfer to, uh, when we feed the colostrum so some pink eye also it's 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 common for the uh, some herds for when when they are in the group so we use this one the cloxacillin and uh, Assessing trace mineral is very, very important in New Zealand. Just before the uh, few, few, few weeks before, or some sometimes one a few months before the uh, mating it starts, we do the analysis, we do the uh, assessment of the, the uh, trace mineral of the animal. So according to the trace min mineral results, uh, we, we treat these animals. So before the mating, selenium level is very important, magnesium and the copper level also. So, so we are monitoring these uh, trace mineral just before the uh, doing any manipulation with the drugs. So according to the, according to the uh, results, we change our mineral mixture or in here the copper level is going high. So we have to pull out the copper from the mineral mixture uh, of the cows. So mastitis is very, very uh, important here. We have uh, some farmers has this one. Uh, this is a DTEC technology. Once the animals comes here, it's indicated as a possible mastitis case. But even though we, we found, uh, if we find a mastitis animal, we do uh, ABST uh, within the farms. So, uh, but the following day, 22 hours before, within the 22 hours, we will get the email uh, with the recommending the recommendation of the uh, recommendation of the drugs that we have used for the, this particular particular animal. So, so it's very very handy method. So, I got some uh, references from the my vet. 
So uh, this is our first choice. Uh, Benzyl penicillin was the other uh, 56% of the animals we treated. Uh, it's, my machine says uh, this is the most effective uh, drug. So 56% of the animals uh, we use only the Benzyl penicillin. And you can see the very, very little amount of tyrosine, 5.2%. So no need to go for the uh, higher uh, strength antibody antibiotics for the cows. So we have to minimize, uh, save those antibodies, antibiotics for the human uh, health. So just the milk certificate that we got. So effluent is very, very important in New Zealand. So a lot of uh, 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 rules and regulation comes to the effluent. So effluent, uh, we can't uh, put those effluent into the fresh water. So, so it's very, very important to uh, spread out within the farm. So uh, they capture the uh, effluent into the solid pit in, according, in, in the solid feed pit. So it's come to the, uh, this, this uh, cobra irrigator we use, we spread all over the, uh, some part of the, a paddock. So, but most important thing is effluent irrigated pasture has a lot of potassium, which can increase positively charged cation in the blood, which means this if the this positively in charged cation pasture, if we feed for the uh, springers or colostrum animals, that they that would be a problem that that may create the metabolic conditions. So if you are feeding the if you think that that the the what we call the closer to the effluent font those grasses are very good so if you feed these animals these uh, uh, fodder stuff or feed stuff to the animal who are in the colostrum stage or springer stage will be a problem so do not feed these uh, high uh, irrigated pasture effluent irrigated pasture for the springer animals or colostrum animals so just uh, you know, how we spread the uh, irrigation in New Zealand farmers also use the irrigation. So imagine uh, how we are, uh, 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 how much important the irrigation for Sri Lankan farmers. So calf rearing is very, very important here. It because these animals need to uh, cow within two years time. So at the time of, uh, at the time of birth, we, monitor, uh, uh, we give a lot of, uh, uh, what we call colostrum. So select, but here, only select the heifers from the replacement for the replacement from the AI cows. If these animals get bred, uh, get pregnant with the natural service or short gastration semen, so we are not going to keep those bulls, those heifers for the replacement. So only we select the replacement from the uh, uh, natural uh, AB uh, uh, AI cows only. So four days best quality colostrum we try to. Uh, feed with the rotavirus vaccinated cows. So, uh, and introduce the high quality uh, concentrate, uh, high, high quality ME and the crude protein. And most important thing is at the time of the weaning. So at the time of weaning, we expect these animal to be, if, if they are uh, Frisian animals, we, are, we need to, uh, we wait we weigh these animals and wait until they be become 100 kgs and if they get jersey for 80 kgs or within 12 weeks to 14 weeks time uh, after three weeks to uh, after three weeks to four weeks time we shift from the fresh milk to cmr to uh, save some uh, some money so it, it's very important to save uh, sell uh, some a lot of milk rather than just feeding those animals so that's why we introduce cmr but five liter per day. And the, uh, we use cedar uh, for the heifers for the six and then use sex semen also for the, at the first stage, at the first time. So we got some uh, conception rate. It's uh, it's a little bit varying, but the, we use cedar, uh, cedar and uh, sex semen for the heifers. And the, the very important at the calving, um, weight at the calving, uh, I will explain it, it later. So uh, the, uh, at the calf rearing, when we, when it comes to the colostrum feeding, this is the refractometer. We we have been monitoring the the uh, colostrum uh, colostrum quality of the colostrum. Uh, then you can see that this is the demarcation. So um, once you when you drop the uh, milk uh, drop a drop of milk here and and check the uh, colostrum quality, the best quality milk uh, colostrum milks come up to twenty two 
So if they are above 22, that's golden colostrum. So try to you try to use this gadget and check your colostrum quality and use that one. And and the intub intubation also the most important thing uh, within six weeks, six hours time or eight hours time we need to give the colostrum. It's the practically difficult maybe they are in in New Zealand practices uh, and with the lot of number of the carving happens within the within few weeks time. So but anyway, but we are monitoring the the golden colostrum and we are to do. Um, as much as possible and give the good bedding also for the, our cows so you can see the wood chips just wood chips here and you can see these in here and we have, we have introduced good uh, uh, hay so introducing early hay and some uh, concentrate feed also very important so once the once they come to the uh, uh, paddock one that of we feed through the, this feeder. So it's very easy to feed for 50 animals within four, four minutes or five minutes time. So here uh, we introduced this 12.5 uh, megajoule dry matter, the very, very high, high energy pellet for this animal until they wean. So one to two kilograms per day. So if, if we care about these animals at the early stage, they will come to a very, 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 very good weight gain at the time of carving. So we have been monitoring their weight gain from the three months of old. Before the week, uh, before the weaning, we are not me me uh, measuring the weight it's because of the practical difficulties. So once once they goes to the uh, the out of from the farm for the grazier, we have been monitoring their uh, weight gain according to the weight gain. Uh, this is our target at the time of carving. They should be somewhere I think more than 50, 500 or 550. At the time of 21 months, all these animals hit the target, which means hit the 500 kilograms. So in the three months time, uh, they may end up here or here. So I, I have calculated the, the amount of milk you are going to lose according to the uh, weight at carving. So imagine these heifers, carving at 400 kilograms 450 and 500 for the easy purpose i'm going to talk about 400 and 500 so imagine these animals can eat only 1.2 body weight ndf levels which means 400 animals 1.248 with 4.8 uh, for 5 12 that means 6 6 kilograms of ndf if these rye grass has ndf 40 that's easy purpose. I got the 40, or so there was 39, or it's it's not it's easy. That's why I got as 40 here. So imagine 40 here, and the total that total dry matter this animal can and 15. And there are three kilograms of dry matter difference here. So total energy consume, if this uh, grass has 12 kilograms, 12 megajoule. This is the total energy those animals consume. So maintenance energy, we have to deduct the maintenance energy from the total total energy. So I'm not going to think about the, the energy for the pregnancy or the walking. I'm, I'm, I have um, I have assumed has no energy waste for the uh, body weight changing or the walking. So which means available energy for the milk, that's it, this is the amount. 94 or 120. So uh, now we know the amount of the energy we need to produce one liter of milk. So we so divided this energy level from the, this one, that's the 17 liters and 21 liters. So if you have introduced 200 heifers to your milk, milking herd, then you can uh, calculate the milk difference. So 200 heifers, 270 days, days in milk, and 7.5. So, or otherwise, you can calculate as the uh, you know, milk liters price also. So, it is very, very important. There is a very, very difference and uh, in income difference also uh, at the time of uh, weight at uh, weight at the time of carving. So, if you care your, your heifers also your replacement, it is very, very important. You must care about your replacement animal. So some reading materials, as I showed the earlier, this is the book I'm using and the fact and figures, anyone can download. This is a very handy book from the PDF version. So it's same thing, only the changing is milk solid. It's, it's not uh, going with Sri Lankan condition, but you can use some other 
other uh, information uh, as your references. Yeah, I'm done. And now it's time for discussion. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Hiroshana. And uh, uh, sorry, for, uh, and I apologize uh, all the participants. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience caused during the uh, due, due to the technical error. And uh, thank you very much for bearing with us and joining the this uh, webinar. And now the floor is open to ask uh, questions. So you can either uh, ask directly or you can even send your uh, questions via chat box. Thank you. If you have any questions, please ask now. So uh, I will. Uh, I would like to ask one question from uh, Dr. Iroshana. Yes. Uh, Dr. Iroshana, uh, I got to know that uh, you are uh, giving uh, dry cow other infusions for all the uh, animals in your farm. Uh, yes. Do you practice it regularly? Because I, uh, now I got to know in some countries due to this uh, antimicrobial resistance. Uh, issue some farms they are not uh, giving uh, dry cow therapy to all the uh, animals so what is your uh, in your farm what is the condition do you give this uh, dry cow therapy to all the animals uh, it's a good question at the actually at the time we use as a blanket therapy but in future we have to use only teeth seal in future so we can't okay, we can't use uh, short short acting or long acting uh, dry cow therapy in future so at the time and for the last few years also the most of the farmers were use, using short acting and the long acting dry cow therapy for, as a blanket therapy so in future some rules are regulation in place so uh, it won't continue more than four years or five years time so it, it may come up to the end soon but I don't know the exact date, but, but the farmers has to use the teeth seal only in future to save those antibody antibiotics for the human health. It's going to be interesting how we are managing the mastitis and the, uh, some other conditions. Mastitis is uh, during the uh, dry period, uh, some wet condition, but it's challenging in future uh, the, if the government's uh, uh, imp imp implementing the rules for farmers has to accept it. Thank you, doctor. Any other questions from the audience? Dr. Roshan, uh, Susan here. Yes. Thank you for a very informative and a very nice presentation. First, and I must congratulate you on great presentation. My question is, uh, you mentioned that some feed you are importing uh, for dairy cows. So what type of feed they actually, it is a concentrate or the grasses? Actually, we have been feeding those animals, the uh, BDG, that's a distilled grain, uh, dried grain, that's the byproduct of ethanol production using uh, maize and crushed wheat. That 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 is the... Uh, main uh, ingredient and, and other products we use here, farm kernel, PK we use as PK. So th these are the main uh, concentrate feed we use here and some silage, but we are not importing directly from the other countries. We are buying from the importers who import into the country. Okay, thank you. Any other and one, one other question, Dr. Hiroshan, that is, uh, you uh, mentioned that uh, your SSC count is uh, one, uh, maintaining around uh, 120,000. Then yes. uh, do you practice any special method like uh, vaccination or, uh, uh, or, or, or maintaining good herd hygiene? What is the uh, secret? secret? Secret is keeping the lanes very clean and doing the 
uh, stripping and using these technologies. So if 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 you manage your uh, if you do the right procedure when you do the milking, and which means we do the two 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 times stripping per each quarter per one week. So if these animals get mastitis or discoloration or any clots, we are we can uh, early detect these animals. So it's very, very important. And other thing is uh, we use uh, the best product that the chlorhexidine gluconate as the teeth sprayer, uh, which contains some emollient also. So using these products and, and in an effective way, uh, we can minimize our uh, mastitis condition and uh, keeping the milk qualities in very, very good condition. So we are not giving any vaccination here, but we try to maintain the hygiene of the plant and the plant, plant hygiene is very, very important. Every day we have to clean the plant each, each after each milking using the acid and uh, some other days we use alkaline also. Here we regularly use acids. In Sri Lanka, I think we use alkaline frequently, but here we use acid, but uh, um, more, more acids and uh, some uh, two days alkaline. So plant hygiene is also very important. So some, some farmers, uh, some farmers have some black flush, uh, back flushing system also, some uh, modern technology, but most of the farmers doesn't have, so they do the stripping uh, and uh, using the heat sprayer and avoiding some splashing from the ground to uh, uh, other, or if, if the other is very, very down, so those animals being culled. So those are the management practices uh, we use. And, and the, uh, I said, as uh, we do the herd testing, once we do the herd testing, uh, they, will, uh, they will give us the high somatic cell count animal. So once you got the high somatic cell counts animals, you can, you can select those animals and cull. Uh, though you don't want to keep those high somatic cell counts animals for the each, each milking uh, season. So it's also very important when, when you cull the high somatic cell animals, so it, that, that, that genetic, genetic won't uh, go to the next uh, level also. So those are the management practices we do. Hey, thank you very much. Are there any other questions? Because this is a very good opportunity for you to get to know about the New Zealand condition. So I hope uh, you might have uh, some more questions and any doubts you can clear. Okay, Dr. Roshan, uh, again, I'm uh, Dr. Randika. And yes. thank you very much for your nice presentation. We got an idea about New Zealand conditions compared to our Sri Lankan conditions, Dr. Roshan. I have one layman question that uh, you uh, you get, do you get male calves in your, as progenies in your farms most, most of the time since you are doing sex semen, right? And uh, Dr. Roshan? Yes, sex semen we only do for the heifers. Yeah. But the cows, so, we do the conventional semen. So the ratio uh -huh. would be the 50-50 male and female, or maybe the, the, the ratio would be uh, changing, okay. but we, we also get in male cows. So what do, you, what, what, do you, what do you do with the male calves? You call that them? Is or another, that is another industry here, the beef, ah, okay. uh, meat. That's another industry. So you, you sell those calves as calves, or you rear them as in the different uh, farms for meat industry? Uh, some farms rear those animals, some farms uh, sell those animals within four okay. days, three or six days time. So it's, it's, it's difficult to rear here. The carving happened within 10 to 12 weeks time. So imagine 1500 cow unit, all the 1500 animals will cow with the one animal. So it's very, very difficult to keep all the heifers or all the bulls within the farm. So it's the easy mm -hmm. management practices. We get rid of these animals as soon as possible to save the colostrum milk also. So that, that the male calf also, uh, and uh, some heifers born from the natural service, that is also another industry here. Okay. And as a, as a country hall, this is another, I mean, broad question, Dr. Hiroshi, to get an idea. 
do you encourage uh, i mean uh, for the people to drink uh, fresh milk or i mean uh, you encourage to give uh, because you produce a lot of milk powder in new zealand right we are getting a lot of quantities of powder for for our country so uh, you believe are they nutritious because i am we are just having a lot of myths and it's you know on this milk powder contents in sri lanka and uh, wh- what about the new zealand conditions i mean people are drinking fresh milk or milk powder in more i mean uh, it, can you explain about it uh, dr roshan yeah actually milk powder is not popular here most of people are using the the fresh milk coming from the the uh, supermarkets from the pasteurized milk or some other condensed milk as condensed condensed milk so the some people use the milk powder but it is not the uh, most more popular so okay. a uh, lot of people use the fresh milk or if we are uh, if most farmers or the workers in the dairy industry they use more uh, uh, farm milk and fresh milk not not much uh, uh, powder milk so it, it's better to go for the fresh milk but in sri lanka it's very difficult to find out the hygienic milk that is the issue the you can find out the milk but when when the uh hygiene in terms of hygiene and the the quality of the milk would be the problem imagine you can see the uh, uh seasonal somatic cell count of the whole whole season is 120000 so once you go to the field level uh, it's very very high so the bacteria count also very very high so one over 1 million or over 2 million so here we do not touch the milk they we filter we filter through the filters and we do not touch the milk and straight straight through into the vat through the plate cooler that plate the once the uh, milk coming from the uh, vat into the vat it goes about below the 18 degrees so milk quality is very very high so so people use uh, fresh milk rather than just uh, powder milk thank you dr roshan yeah Uh, one more question dr roshan i have uh, it's also a lemon question dr roshan uh, how much is the farm gate price of milk in new zealand because what why i am asking this is uh, when when we import powdered milk from new zealand to sri lanka they normally sell yeah it's in my it, it's in 60 rupees uh, per kilogram so i just got, want to know how much the farm gate price in uh, new zealand can you see my this slides introduction overview that's from the last milk price milk solid per kilogram that's the 9 2019 season uh, 7.2 dollar per one milk Please. solid uh, uh, okay yes. thank you that is barely for uh, 80 80 rupees in sri lanka so this is the farm gate price farm gate price is the changing during the winter and some some with the covid also i think it's the forecast is going high so it's it that is 2019 2020 i got this one from the stats okay thank you any more questions you you can easily con- convert this 7.2 at the farm gate price and uh, and the product in the country Hi Roshana, Mr. Sanjeeva. Hi sir. Uh you said about the body condition is cold that says about uh, 5.4 something like this. It's in uh, one in 10 scale, isn't it? Yeah. So the one that we using, one that Australia is also using one in 5 scale. It's a bit different to here and there. Yes, doctor. One to ten. Yeah, one to ten. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So thank you. Yeah, five five point five for heifers, five for uh, cows at the time of calving. Thank you. are there any more questions is 
since there are no more questions, uh, thank you, Dr. Iroshana. Thank you very much for the informative, very, uh, uh, very good presentation. And we learned a lot about the condition in New Zealand. Earlier from Dr. Sanjeeva's presentation, we learned about the Australian situation. Today, now from your presentation, we learn a lot about the New Zealand condition, the dairy industry and the uh, fact, farm practices and everything. So this will be very useful to uh, will be very useful for our veterinarians to plan their uh, all the uh, their day-to-day -day work. So thank you very much again, Dr. Iroshana. Uh, uh, you are joining from uh, New Zealand and giving all your uh, uh, knowledge to our veterinarians in our Sri, not only in Sri Lanka. Today, the vet, uh, here our webinar, there are veterinarians who join uh, even from India and uh, Australia uh, and also America and some other countries as well. So thank you very much again, Dr. Iroshana. And also the audience, thank you very much for joining SLVA webinar series. So the, our next webinar will be uh, on next Friday, that is about the uh, swine management, swine diseases and management uh, by Dr. Uh, Samira Premaratna. So I hope you will join us, uh, you will join our next webinar as well. And I welcome all you all to, uh, and I invite all you all to join the next webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Eroshan. And thank you very much, uh, all the participants for participating today's event. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Eroshan, for your nice presentation. Yeah. yeah, you are welcome. And thank you for the opportunity also. Yeah.